Hello, my name is Elkin Hernandez. I am the Director of Maintenance Services with DC Water. And with me today is Ting Lu. Ting is the Digital Solutions Business Practice Leader at Clean Water Services in Hillsboro, Oregon. We would like to welcome you to the Lyft Intelligent Water System Challenge Overview for the 2020-2021 Challenge. Intelligent Water Systems emphasize the opportunity that the water sector has to take advantage of advanced technologies that can dramatically shift management decision making. Intelligent water systems and technology provide great benefit to the sector by allowing for improved ease of analyzing historical and real-time data, delivering the integration of information required for high-performance operations, enhance, enhancing the use of data by utility personnel, elevating levels of services, and taking advantage of the Internet of Things. Participating in the challenge have the opportunity to decide the category or focus area in which they would like to apply. At the start, we suggest the following challenge categories for consideration. Collection systems, wastewater treatment systems, drinking water treatment systems, source water, watershed distribution networks. To utility participating in this challenge, this benefit includes you got to design your own challenge problems and then using real world data. If you like to use your own data, that will be ideal. And working with the team members to identify solutions based on smart technologies and the Internet of Things and IoT. And also receiving innovative solutions to solve your problems and learning more about the state of the art in intelligent water technologies. In order to participate in the challenge, you'll need to form a team. Teams are made up of no more than six individuals. You will then make a plan by defining the problem, understanding the system, laying out the, uh, that plan with the team together. You will then implement your solution by managing the data, doing the analysis, communicating actionable results, and solving the problems with the team together. So you will present this material to the judges at the end. If you are interested in participating or would like further details regarding the challenge, the following are the milestones and the dates, along with the link to challenge website. The team registration deadline is April 9, 2021. Please reach out to WEF and WARF with any questions that you might have. We would now like to provide case studies from both DC Water and Clean Water Services to assist in the understanding of benefits of intelligent water systems for the water sector. Hello everyone, it is my pleasure to share with you our story about driving digital transformation at Clean Water Services. I'm Ting Lu, a business practice leader at Digital Solutions at Clean Water Services. First, I want to provide a little bit background about Clean Water Services. We are a county specialty district in Washington County, Oregon. And we provide wastewater collection, stormwater collection, treatment, resource recovery, and surface water management, river flow management, and also on a large scale watershed restoration. Today, we have over 100 digital tools to support all these business services. And our mission is to build clean water for today and tomorrow. Many people have started to think about digital transformation. To me, digital transformation is all about the journey. Looking back 10 years ago, uh, for clean water services, we had a strong IT foundation, which includes software, hardware, and networks. On top of that is application, databases, and integrations. And back then, people have a security conscious mindset, and knowing security is important for the infrastructure. And over the years, we have built business intelligence, embracing SSRS, SSIS, and Power BI dashboard to develop data-driven decision support tools for the organizations. We started to deploy mobility and using mobile devices such as iPhone, iPad to communicate between field crews and also offices, team members and uh, supervisors to look at project information, 
to understand field sensor validation, pretreatment investigation, and everything. We have also deployed cloud solutions to leverage third-party uh, vendor solutions to support the business. And all of this relies on all the big data, data storage and data processing. Now we started to look at the data management governance as well since 2017. Our first attempt is to discover um, and uncover dark data. What I mean by dark data is the data that's being only collected by an individual or small group, but the value of that data, the transformation has not been utilized from data to insight and to wisdoms. Um, the other part we have started to look at is building a security culture. This including not only IT professionals, but provide trainings, leverage technology and governance model to really build a security culture for clean water services, including both IT and operation technology, OT together. And big part of a digital transformation is requiring the large sensor network. And that's why over the last years, we started to deploy IoT technology approach. Through collaboration with the Limnotech, we were able to leverage the opportunity of open source electronics. This is a DIY approach that includes integrating several key components together, bareware sensors, data logger and microchip, radio modules, and other accessories as needed. So the total cost of this approach is only a few hundred dollars, as you can see, compared with the, if you are building a commercial sensor package, it usually costs at least a few thousand dollars. So this approach allows us to focus our resource on the highest quality of bareware sensors and build that dense sensor network on the ground to support watershed assessment. Our first design principle is modularity. This means you can use this approach to connect with many type of different bear sensors, inter-exchange network modules, and multiple dashboard is available for different users. The second design principle is scalability. Currently, we're piloting a Laura one with Cisco as an alternative network. This will help further reduce the cost of sensor network since the radio-based module, so you don't need to pay that monthly cellular charge. It provides a long-range connectivity. Low-power solution helps minimize the time required for a field visit. A low data rate helps save a lot of data storage and push data analytics to the edge. The third design principle is fit for purpose. Basically, as I mentioned, we have designed a different type of dashboard for, um, depends on the audience. We have the dashboard uh, for data scientists and laboratory staff to look at the data and the data quality. We have also dashboard using other type of uh, software um, and the visualization tools to, uh, for business um, partners or um, project managers to look at more uh, project information and tracking um, where the data is going. And also for decision makers to look at the project overall information. So that's our three principles for um, IoT sensor network. Water Services has embarked on the journey of a digital transformation. And like other utilities, we face many challenges, such as water resource management, extreme weather patterns like a drought and flooding, stringent permit requirement, and also aging infrastructures. As a business practice leader for digital solutions, I am always look at how do we leverage technologies to help solving these challenges together. Having continuous monitors um, is going to allow us to solve a lot of things we weren't able to solve before. The biggest part of what we're trying to achieve is to facilitate real-time knowledge of what's going on in the environment at more key data points so that we can build a more holistic knowledge of the watershed. 
The information gathered from the new sensors will be part of Clean Water Services data catalog and will be one of many pieces uh, used to um, help understand the watershed and will be in place along existing monitoring technologies, um, information captured from unmanned aerial surveys, and um, LIDAR information. It's pretty cool that we have this opportunity and potential to implement customized monitoring stations that are pretty cost effective. I've really been pleased with how effortlessly natural systems, digital solutions, research and innovation, and water resource recovery um, have all collaborated on the project. The partners have been a great help. The, the biggest challenges have been understanding the technology and introducing something uh, new to a number of business units, including our own. So to really bring it to scale, and to create a holistic approach, we have to be able to build our cloud infrastructure, our communications, as well as understand different pricing, uh, manufacturing, and additional knowledge that might be required to actually assemble and maintain these sensors. Purchasing, procurement, and asset management has been a pretty big challenge. It's definitely a shift in the way that we typically operate. What we gain in cost effectiveness and customization, we lose in paid support. So it's been a pretty big challenge owning all of that ourselves and providing that capacity. Even though this concept of Internet of Things has existed for a long time, uh, the manner and the frequency at which the data transmits uh, was either higher cost or required lots of maintenance to be able to effectively provide a window of what's actually happening. But now that technology has kind of grown, we have the ability to use different communication protocols. So we can use cellular networks, we can use uh, LoRaWAN, we can use satellite if we wanted to. So we have lots of different ways to communicate, which provide a very uh, versatile ways to interact with the environment. This is still a journey. After a year, we started this IoT project, and it's been incredible to be part of this great team together. And I have seen how talented our team members are and our passion about beautiful clean water for today and tomorrow. I think it's fun because it's so new and so different. It's not something that your typical utility is doing. And it's one of the things that really brought me here in the first place to Clean Water Services is the culture of innovation that we have. You know, being able to take on something like this, even though it was so new to everybody at first that we're willing to kind of take steps into the dark without being able to necessarily see the next step has really helped us push the envelope. And it's already been paying dividends. I think it's going to continue to pay off a lot more in the future. Well, now I'm going to talk about innovation for operational improvements at DC Water. And uh, for that, for this occasion, I'll go over three different cases. Uh, but before that, I'll talk about DC Water. DC Water provides uh, this fresh water to more than 600,000 residents of the District of Columbia and also provides uh, wastewater services to over 1.6 million people in the District of Columbia, as well as the jurisdictions of Montgomery and Prince George's counties in Maryland, and Fairfax and London County in Virginia. The first case I wanna go over is the pipe sleuth. The pipe sleuth is a, an artificial intelligence powered pipe condition assessment solution for metropolitan wastewater networks. This, is an anti, uh, this uses artificial intelligence space automated uh, condition assessment in an, and advanced image processing, uh, including deep neural network algorithms to identify, grade, and score pi anomalies based on, the, on international standards. This solution uh, generates automatic reports and uh, as of right now can support different, uh, 50 different anomalies. For the people that are uh, familiar with uh, with uh, sewer monitoring and inspection, uh, an F, uh, a system of these characteristics can significantly reduce the manual effort uh, needed to review and code uh, pipes on uh, on your assessing video scans. So this uh, solution was uh, uh, led by our IT department and has been uh, deployed for uh, now a few years, and the deployment includes the 
other utilities outside this water, and in some cases, including international utilities. Uh, it has been uh, extremely useful for the inspection uh, of these uh, pipes and uh, have been allowing us to do uh, early detection, obviously reducing the cost of the uh, scans. And with this early detection, use that information to improve planning for capital for repairs and as well as capital improvements. This is uh, obviously a very value-added solution uh, for the wastewater industry. The second case I want to go over is an, our open data portal. This is a, a, a situation in which the challenge was to increase transparency uh, of operations, and uh, the solution that we proposed was an open line uh, data portal. This uh, is a portal that is access to anybody. It's, it's is, is, is access to the public through our dcwater.com uh, web page, uh, page. And you can find information uh, for five different topics. Uh, one relates to capital improvements. In this case, we tell you about uh, the status uh, of our capital improvements, uh, scope, budgets, and progress. The idea is here to keep our rate payers informed of where the investments are going and, uh, and what are our strategic initiatives. The second item on the uh, open data portal are uh, pipe materials. Uh, in this case, uh, we provide information that allows to share the material used for these pipes, the installation dates, and the status of the pipes that we have across the city. The next topic that we have on the data portal are sanitary sewer overflows. So in this case, we, uh, in, in, a, in an open manner, share with the, with the public the amount of overflows that we had had uh, during the during the in the past, including uh, the dates and the locations. Another segment of information is the one about the water uh, hydrants. In this case, we include location, type, year, and the status of the different water hydrants across the uh, District of Columbia. And the last uh, topic of information that we share are the uh, the one related to water main breaks in which uh, we have a catalog by location and year of the occurrence. So well, this, uh, this, uh, sharing this data to the, with the public uh, creates a great, a great sense of transparency and, uh, and trust with the public. The last uh, case I want to mention is our IoT platform. This is used at the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, the idea here is to provide a solution for a lo the need of local sensor uh, sen uh, connectivity. The capabilities that we wanted to include here were low-cost connectivity, flexible with multiple uh, communication methods, flexible dashboarding, so we're not tied to a single product, uh, being able to use the data for different applications, and so on, uh, including uh, you know things like uh, notifications or and, uh, trending, uh, online monitoring, and if that is the case, analytics. So. One of the advantages of having more information is that you can try to attempt things that uh, otherwise wouldn't be possible, like advanced uh, condition assessment by having uh, more information on rotating and linear assets. In the case of rotating assets, uh, we're talking about things like vibration monitoring, ultrasound monitoring, and uh, energy performance, and so on. We also use it for very low cost environmental monitoring on condition rooms and things like flood alarms. The, the, the amount of sensors that you can connect are is pretty much uh, very large. And uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of finding uh, what you need is and, and how you can find sensors that meet that need. Uh, we have found sensors that may go from $60 uh, to $1,000 a pop, depending on what you're trying to do for, uh, look for. The advantage of using IoT is, uh, yeah, Sometimes that the sensor is cheaper, but also the connectivity is very simple. We had had sensor running for more than three years on two AA batteries and it's still running. And these are sensors in which we spend $60 uh, per unit. So for anybody familiar with the cost of deploying uh, hardwired sensors or other technologies, they may uh, see the value. For our platform, we're using a, um, we're mainly using a, something called LoRa One which provides a very low cost connectivity with very high penetration. Uh, obviously the limitation for this kind of technology is that the bandwidth are very narrow. So the amount of data is limited. So you, you need to understand that you have to balance the, 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 the amount of uh, data you transmit and the frequency. So you can have a good performance on the energy consumption of the sensors. On this slide, we mentioned something called control strategies. 
So this is a, an example in which we use this to uh, provide a full array of extra uh, instrumentation into our uh, grid pump system. So we could uh, use that information to do analytics and uh, and move into uh, from simple automation simple automation to advanced automation by having a uh, uh, use that data to create baselines and uh, create um, running through analytics to create insights that can give uh, notifications to the operators on on potential failures to happen or on uh, on actions that otherwise would not be easy to detect on on, on anomalies that otherwise would not be easy to detect. Here we can look at the architecture for the, the platform. So uh, it's a very simple uh, cloud-based platform that has uh, provides connectivity to different means, as you say, as I mentioned in this LoRa, but it could also be done wireless. Uh, could be also done directly to, with third-party portals through REST API interfaces, and also from our historians. This information is processed in the cloud and used, uh, as you can see there, for dashboarding or for uh, uh, alert, and also for interface with third-party analytical applications. To make this uh, platform work, one of the things we have to do is to develop an app to configure the sensors in a, in a, in a simple way. So this uh, allows us to, in a very, very straightforward way, enter, add new sensors to the platform, and add uh, metadata information as uh, descriptions, units, range, location, and so on. So we can, uh, with very little added cost, uh, expand the capabilities. As I mentioned before, this allows also to dashboarding and visualization of the data. In this case, uh, you can see a report created on Power BI that can that show us the status of condition uh, monitor uh, condition uh, environmental conditions on some of our electrical rooms. Keep in mind that the sensors uh, that are supporting this application are uh, very inexpensive and the cost of installation is is uh, near it's close to zero. Uh, so, in terms of hardware, uh, a solution like this one with uh, 20 sensors in the field uh, might be, may be running in the $1,500 uh, total, which is very attractive. Uh, our plan is are to keep expanding this platform and uh, try to make use of that community, the, the data that we have in storage, uh, to uh, gain more, in, more insights of the processes that we have through analytics means. Well, just to summarize uh, on this very quick presentation, uh, we have learned some lessons out, out of this journey, and we learned that uh, the algorithms and the technical stuff are uh, relatively easy, even though they can look uh, something intimidating. With some uh, patience and perseverance, you can um, uh, get a good hand of them. As a utility, we learned that uh, trying to set up a strategic overview is a bit more difficult than, than the technical part. Trying to go into practical stuff becomes a very challenge when you start facing the limitations of uh, not only resources, but of the installations or your operations. And uh, we find that the hardest part has been the commitment because as uh, you guys may imagine, uh, most of the um, people, employees at a utility are already uh, very busy and committed with uh, tasks. So finding the commitment to be successful on this type of task requires uh, a big support from um, from upper management, and as well as a good uh, definition of goals and expectations, so the the group uh, can be successful in the long term. So well, so well. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this uh, short presentation and got a got a, a quick idea of some of the uh, initiatives that uh, have been uh, provided about to our utility. And uh, we hope that I hope that you guys can come up with more other innovative ideas that can help us to uh, break through the smart water systems in the water sector. So thanks for your time. On behalf of Team Glue and myself, we would like to thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you will take the opportunity to participate in the 2020-2021 IWS Challenge. Thank you.